Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number 82 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is passion. Our quote of the day comes to us from Billy Joe Armstrong. Our passion is our strength. I'm thrilled to bring you today's episode. Our guest is a woman that is driven, excited, and clearly passionate when it comes to both bettering herself as well as others. Although I only recently met her, we have quickly become good friends, and I look forward to getting to know her even better in the future. She's also an incredibly successful podcast host herself, so it's always great to connect with other successful people. Without further delay, I would like to introduce my good friend, Nicole Jansen. Nicole, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Well, I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Christopher. I appreciate it. So the first question we ask everybody is, are you ready to make it happen? Oh, yes. I think I was born ready. I believe so. I've known you for a short time, and I think you are ready and then some. Well, you know, I, I actually, uh, when I was, a, I was a kid, my neighbor, you know, she was a friend of mine. She was a little older than me, and she would uh, sleep in on Saturday mornings, and I would show up at her door really early, and I'd be like, let's go. Let's do something. So that's kind of, uh, yeah, kind of my approach to life. Let's go. I like it. We're ready to rock. So the number one objective of our podcast is to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up. I was curious if you had either a story about perseverance or perhaps a challenging time that tested you, but you kept on going and didn't quit. Mm. Yeah, I've got a few of those, Chris. Um, (laughs) uh, I've been in business for a number of years. I started my uh, first business, a first official business when I was 16. Certainly I had started uh, much earlier than that. Um, doing little entrepreneurial ventures. But um, one of the biggest challenges that I faced in business, uh, and I've had the pleasure, the opportunity to have challenges in relationships and health as well and all those areas. But in business in particular, we uh, uh, I built my own business and I also helped my family. My parents uh, got uh, partnered with them and built a very successful business. By the time I was in my mid-20s, uh, we had built a, an eight-figure business, um, and uh, I figured that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life, and we were that's what we were all going to do for the rest of our lives. And uh, in a few short years, that business disappeared, almost all of it, and uh, through a series of events, and uh, I found myself wondering, what the heck am I going to do with the rest of my life? And I could have gone back to, you know, go not go back, but go to a job or give up or whatever. And and what I decided to do is take the learning out of that and saying, what did I learn? What did I learn on the way up? And what did I learn on the way down? And um, I actually learned more on the way down than I learned on the way up, uh, you know, in terms of life lessons and so forth and and business lessons. And, uh, and then what I decided to do is take that and uh, then teach it to you know, the business owners, I'd be, you know, I, I launched my business, Discover the Edge, coaching and training entrepreneurs and teaching them what I had learned so they could avoid going through the same thing. And, um, and it was worth it. It was worth every, uh, every bit of it to be able to, um, to share with people that were new and excited and wanted to start their business and they wanted to start it off right or that had a business that they had poured their heart and soul into and uh, and wanted to make sure that it it was a long-term, sustainable, profitable business that could be transferred to their kids and on and on. And, uh, and so I've been able to do that only because I took the, the lessons from my own failures and uh, persevered through that. Well, I appreciate you sharing that, and I want to just touch on one thing you mentioned, which I, I think is really interesting, is, is you were very specific that you learned more on the way down than you did on the way up, and I think a lot of people kind of flip that back around, and they say, oh, well, you know, I'm successful and I learned. Obviously, there are many lessons to learn and many wonderful lessons as you are succeeding and hitting different levels of success, but it's on the way down, and I think during those failures where people really learn and truly understand the pros and cons of business and being an entrepreneur. And I'm glad you were able to take that learning curve and turn it into your business. If you wouldn't mind, if you could briefly tell us a little bit about your coaching business. Sure. So now what I do is I I work with entrepreneurs and business leaders and helping them to, uh, to, 
to, not, yeah, so increasing sales, team performance, profitability, uh, you know, that's what, what business owner doesn't want that, right? They want to make more money, uh, be more effective at what they do, have a greater reach. Uh, but how I do that is really by helping them to play to their strengths, to identify the strengths of the business owner uh, or the leader, uh, also the strengths of their team and the strengths of the business itself. And as as we identify that, what we're able to do is we're able to differentiate them in the marketplace. And we're also able to build greater confidence in them and in their team. If there's a team's working together, they go, wow, you know what? We actually are an awesome team and you've got strengths that I don't have. And, you know, and I've got weaknesses and we can we can all work together on that. But that's um, that's underlying all the coaching that I do. And then we build on top of that strategy and sales and whatever else. They need mindset, of course, working with uh, them on their mindset to be able, what does it take for them to go from where they are to where they want to be in business, but also, uh, you know, in all the other areas of life. So my focus for my clients is, yeah, I've helped them increase sales 150% and doubling revenue year over year, and that's great. But I really want them to come back to me and say, Nicole, I love my life. Because if they can say that, then I know that not only are they making money and they're doing what they love and they're playing to their strengths, but they also have great relationships. Their health is in order. They're taking care of themselves. They're taking care of the people that are important to them. And they're doing something that they really enjoy doing. Wow, that was that was quite a bit as, as far as a pretty detailed explanation of what you do and, and how you help people. And, and one of the things you mentioned that I just wanted to briefly briefly mentioned is you talked about where you are and where you want to be. And I think a lot of businesses, entrepreneurs, and people in general in life don't always look at where they want to go. And one of the things we focus on at No Quit Living, both with our individual as well as our corporate and team clients, is taking a look at where you are now and where you want to be in the future and looking at goals and then reverse engineering where you want to be and what it's going to take to get there. So I appreciate you mentioning that. And it sounds like a very unique business model, which is why you've been successful. I also wanted to to commend you because you have a very, very successful podcast sh- show yourself. And something that people always ask is, how do you do it all to me? So I'm going to flip that question on to you. And, and how do you manage a very successful business as well as a very successful podcast show also? Oh, that's a great question. And the answer is I don't do it all. Um, one of the things that I teach my clients and that I had to learn myself is uh, is to say no. And there's a lot of opportunities that come our way. I'm sure you get a lot of opportunities every day of things that you can do. Uh, they're good things. They're great things even, you know, uh, and yet uh, they're maybe not the the best thing for you or for me to do at that time. So it has to be at the right time and the right place or the right people and all that. And so, yeah, so the answer is I say no. I, na- I say no to things that don't move me towards my vision of what I'm looking to create. So I ask myself the question, does this move me closer? Does this, does this, does this help me? Is this an accelerator for me in the direction that I'm going? Yes. Great. Let's, let's really explore it. No, it's a diversion. Then I I just, I just, I'm sorry. You know what? It's a great opportunity. You're going to be great at it, whatever, you know, uh, but this isn't the right opportunity for me. And it's tough because people will say, you're crazy. You know, you can make a gazillion dollars doing this. I'm like, probably, you know, but not if I'm jumping all over the place and doing all these different things. And so uh, whenever you choose to say yes to something, it means that you're going to have to say uh, no to other things to be able to have the space in your uh, schedule to actually do it. So you can stay focused or as Gary Keller would say, you know, focus on the one thing. I love it. I love it. It's, what is it? The jack of all trades, master of none. And, And you touched on something that was interesting is every time you say yes to something, directly you're saying no to something else. So I'm, I'm glad you touched that. Touched on that. And Jeff Woods, who has the One Thing podcast, he works for Gary Keller and the amazing book, The One Thing, which Gary wrote. I think it's it's, it's a remarkable, but it's also a sim- very simple concept that they talk about. And I don't want to make it seem like what they do over at Keller Williams and, and what they do with The One Thing is simple, but it's taking your one thing and taking it to a next level, which is what is the most important thing for you to do right now? And I think a lot of people sometimes miss that and try to try to chew on too many things. So I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because it is an important point. Mm, that comes uh, back to what uh, Lou Holtz said um, once. I remember hearing him speak 
And he said, W-I-N, what's important now? You ask yourself in the middle of the day, you're in the, you know, got all these things going on. Okay, wait a second here. What, what's important now, right? W-I-N, you know, you've got, you've got problems, you're, you've got chaos, you know, things that you're, you know, like fires that you got to put out and important things that need to happen in your day. Okay, what's the most important thing for me to do right now? And, uh, and that allows you to focus on that one thing and keeps you moving forward. So you don't get stuck going in circles or going off in some tangent that, you know, you find, you go, how did I get here? And this is a, this was a total waste of time. I'm sure we've all done that. I mean, geez, you know, at some point that's how we learn it. No, no question. And that's great. Lou Holtz, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of his. He's done some amazing things both on the football field as all as well as off, but I love W I N what's important now. So as we all know, Nicole, life is incredibly challenging. I was curious, what motivates and inspires you each and every day to keep going? Hmm. What motivates and inspires me is the opportunity that I have. Those are the opportunity and the obligation. I don't often talk about obligation, but opportunity to make an impact, to make a difference, to say, yeah, you know what? My life mattered. And uh, that motivates me. And anytime I feel down or I feel lazy. I don't want to do anything. It's because I've lost sight of my vision. And uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that says without vision, the people perish. And it's true. And so it's focusing on what is it that I'm really uh, wanting to do, but also what am I here for? And that that ties in uh, obligation, meaning I have been given a life I only have one to my in <laughs> I'm in my to to my knowledge I only have one to work with uh, right now and uh, you know like some people say you may come back okay great that's a that's a whole other story but in this lifetime I'm here I have strengths and I have gifts that were given to me and uh, my responsibility is to share those. And so that motivates me. So if I feel lazy and I go, yeah, I see that vision, but I don't want to work on it today. What will get me off my butt is realizing that I have an obligation because I was given these gifts and I need to share them with others. And and that's what I'm here for, to be a good steward of those. No, I, I like that. And here's a different question for you. If you had to define yourself in one word, what would that one word be? Oh, that's a great question. The first one that came to mind was passion. Um, drive. And I've, and I've been often told that I'm quite tenacious. <laughs> so there's three, <laughs> but they're all pretty similar. I like it. If any of our future guests don't have any words, I will give them one of the three that you gave. There you go. So I wanted to ask if there's anything exciting that you're working on or about to possibly release that you'd like to share or tell our listeners about. Oh, yeah. I've got a new website that's going to be coming out with, uh, we're going to have some new courses, online courses. I'm very committed to working with uh, business owners and leaders and also entrepreneurs that are starting out that may not be able to, uh, maybe not have the cash flow to be able to to hire me on a one-on-one basis, but I want to be able to give them resources to uh, to get their business launched and, uh, you know, on the path to profitability and success uh, as they define it. And so, yeah, I've got uh, some exciting things happening in that uh, space. Also, my podcast, I've got some really cool guests coming up. Uh, uh, and you, of course, you're, uh, you've been on the show as well. And so, that was really cool. So I've got some exciting things that are developing on that uh, on that level, as well as doing some events, live events, where we bring together leaders of transformation, people who are making impact in the world, and bringing them together and saying, "Okay, how do we do this? If we're going to change the world." I have on my phone actually my uh, screensaver, the the home screen, and the uh, screen. My screensaver actually says, "You can change the world," and. Um, uh, that reminds me that I can, I can change the world. You can change the world. One person can change the world. And so, um, my goal is to be able to bring together people that are making an impact so that we can work together. Imagine if, if we're all committed to making an impact and we work together on it, how much more we can achieve and, uh, how we can transform the world. So I'm working on some things that will allow that to happen and facilitate that. That sounds awesome. And if you need any other speakers or help or anything, I would love to to get involved in, in some capacity because one of the things I'm passionate about is the whole word collaboration. And I think individually 
many people are strong, but collectively people are unstoppable. So I think what you're doing and, and how you're doing is, is awesome. And there's definitely huge opportunities in many ways for what you've talked about. And I'm excited for your for your new website, some of your courses. And you also mentioned something which hit home a little bit to me was is the price point that some people can't afford coaching and you've you've allowed it to be not only affordable but in some ways through your courses and things you give people the option to to have some of that coaching and that's something that I'm passionate about too because I think a lot of people don't realize that you know it's it costs money for a new ben- venture or for an entrepreneur and not that people shouldn't make money as coaches and things but I think there's an opportunity to help a lot of those companies along the way and and I believe in karma and if you go out of your way to help people as they're getting up on the up and up, the flip side is I believe at the at after that point, not only will they be able to return a favor for you, but possibly for somebody else. And one of the things we talk about almost in every show is the pay it for mentality is is if you can help someone else get to there where they want to go, then I think it comes back to you directly and indirectly tenfold. Oh, absolutely. You know what? I started my business at sixteen years old. I didn't really have uh, you know, a war chest set aside or uh, you know, I was starting off from scratch with an idea. I just knew I wanted to be in business. I didn't even know what I was going to sell. I just knew I wanted to be in business for myself. And so, you know, people helped me along the way. They encouraged me. They offered me input, mentorship. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am today without that. And uh, and so that's why I appreciate it because I started very grassroots. I didn't have you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to say, okay, well, you know, we're going to start a business. I'm ready to go, which is awesome. If you have it, fantastic. But that was not my experience. And so, um, you know, I appreciate where people are, uh, stepping out on faith. They're putting in all their savings, maybe stepping out of a job. Uh, you know, maybe they've got a family, maybe they're a single mom and, you know, they want to make a go of it. And I believe that every single person is an entrepreneur, uh, by by nature, we are entrepreneurs because we're creators. And I believe we're created in the image of God. God's a creator. We're creators. And the question isn't, are we creative? But how do we create? And uh, and so I want to encourage that. And I want to encourage people to, like I talked about before, play to their strengths and then turn it into a business where they can do what they love and what they're great at all the time and make money at it. And so if they need a little help in the beginning to get that going, well, then so be it. The key is, though, the key with that is it's not so much um, the money. It, what it is, is for them to they got to have stake in the game. They got to be committed to, you know, to doing it because it doesn't matter how cheap the program is or how expensive the program is. You know, and you work with clients. It doesn't matter. Or you have your own uh, coaches yourself. It's really about how committed you are to the outcome and to your success. And uh, that speaks to your no quit living. I mean, you got to you got to be committed to not giving up and learning what you need to learn. And if you don't know it, well, don't worry about it. You can figure it out. Believe in yourself enough to know that you're you're smart enough to figure out what you need to know in order to make it work. And if that's a course, if that's coaching, if that's reading a book, if that's going to a seminar, whatever that whatever that is. No, I I like that. And 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 based on that, putting in the work and not not giving up and, and believing. It reminds me of a very famous quote by Oprah Winfrey, which is, do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. And that's something that's something that I believe in, and especially in entrepreneurship, but also in different areas of life, personal development, becoming the best version of yourself, whether it's a spouse, a significant other, a parent, is, is you do what you have to do now so you can enjoy it later on. So speaking of quotes, I wanted to ask, do you have a favorite quote? Oh, I've got tons of them. I love... I love quotes. One of the quotes that's on my uh, on my website is um, by Mother Teresa. It says, I can do what you can't do and you can do what I can't do, but together we can do great things. And uh, that's one of my favorite quotes and philosophies. That's a, that's a great quote. And as many of our listeners know, I'm a big sports guy and a former college coach and college athlete. And, and to me, it's all about the team component and why I value and like watching and reading about successful teams is not the individual perspective and not the amazing coach, but it's the teams that can truly come together and take best players or best skilled players that do different things differently. Individually, they're they're very talented, but collectively you add all those things together and, and they're unstoppable. And it's the same thing in business. You take a company that's unbelievably successful and you have people that are amazing at in the accounting world 
amazing in the advertising, amazing in the, de- the department that creates the products and services. So I- I'm glad you touched on that. That's just, that's an amazing quote. Well, and the thing with that is, is in school, we were taught to, you know, to do it all on our own, right? We weren't, you know, you didn't lean over and see how somebody else was answering a question on a test, you know, that, that was called cheating. And so we learned that we had to figure it out on our own. We had to have all the answers and we had to do it by ourselves. We weren't really taught and I'm, I, forgive me for, you know, not stare. I don't want to stereotype and say all, all of it was like that, but a large portion of it was that, yeah, they taught collaboration in certain ways. And certainly if you were in sports, you learned some collaboration because you were part of a team, but school in itself in the classroom. And, and then you get out in the real world and it's like, you got to work together. And people are like, what, you know? And so there is a shift that, is needed for people if they're going to be in business or you're going to be successful in any area of business, whether it's a career working for a company or having your own, especially on your own though, is to be able to work with other people and to set aside your ego to ask for the help that you need. One of the biggest uh, reasons why businesses fail is because they don't ask for the advice when they need it. They, they, they go, Oh, you know, let me figure it out. Or like the classic line, how are you doing? Fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I had one guy one time, he said to me, I, I, I walked by his store and it was empty. I mean, it was like ghost town every time I walked by and I stopped in as a business coach, I stopped in and said, Hey, how are things going? He's like, everything's fine. I'm, I'm good. Right. Three months later it was shut down. And I'm like, define fine for me because I'm not clear. <laughs> like, how you define fine, right? It's like a woman asking a woman, how are you doing fine? You know, that's not, that's not a good answer, right? It's like, oh, something's wrong. And, and so, you know, got to ask for the help and, and set aside our ego to think that we need to know everything because we can't possibly know everything. It's like doing everything. You can't possibly do everything. You can't possibly know everything. So, you know, get the help, work together. My goodness, let's work together. It's also more fun when you work with other people. No, I could not agree more. It's it's more fun and you get to share the successes with others as opposed to sit on a pedestal by yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you could go back and give the 20-year-old version of yourself one piece of advice, what would that be? <laughs> the 20-year-old person thought that, you know, I was invincible and thought that uh, I was going to be a, you know, gazillionaire and two weeks. No, but, um, I had all these big dreams and goals. I would tell myself to trust myself and to trust my instincts more. I like it. Trust myself and trust my instincts more. Another spin is if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be and why? Who would I want to have dinner with? Hmm. I'll just, Hey, you know, speaking of intuition, this is the one that popped out is Nelson Mandela. That just came out from, I don't know, somewhere. But you know what? I would. I would love to have dinner with him. And what a testament. We talk about no quit living. Um, I read his book a number of years ago, The Long Walk to Freedom. And being in prison for 27 years and coming out and not coming out bitter, but coming out uh, victorious is uh, is incredible. I have a huge respect for him. And uh, I'd love to spend some time and, and learn about learn more about what drives that within him. Now that would that would be quite quite the dinner and I'm sure you would you would learn a lot and it would be it would be beyond invaluable and then some. So before we let you go, Nicole, I wanted to ask if you had any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. So your listeners are really uh, wanting to learn more about and be encouraged to to not quit and um and I mean, I'm assuming that that's why they come and they listen to your podcast. And I certainly was inspired by your podcast. So I would say that, you know, again, coming back to trusting in yourself and believing in yourself, uh, even when people, other people don't believe in you. Um, there's a lot of, you know, when people say things to you, uh, a lot of times we can be offended by it or deflated by it. Just keep in mind that what they're saying has nothing to do with you, it is their perspective that they're they're looking through the lens of their own life experience when they speak to you. Sometimes that can be empowering and expanding, and sometimes it can be limiting. And so take that all with a grain of salt and and qualify that so that it so that you can 
uh, keep moving forward and believing in yourself. So if somebody else doubts in you is what I'm saying, if somebody else says, oh, you can't do that or that'll never work or I tried that, you know, is to just say, thank you. I appreciate your input and feedback on that. But just know that that's going, that's, that's being filtered through their own life experience and has no reflection on what you're going to be capable of doing. Now, that's, that's great advice and something we, we touch on in, in different ways during our, our shows is in life, people are going to give up on you and it's so important that you just don't give up on yourself. Yes, absolutely. Last question, Nicole, and I promise it's, it's the easiest one. For our listeners that want to connect or follow you, in addition to your amazing podcast, what's the best way for them to, lis- to listen to you in addition to that or follow you on your social media channels or your website as well? Well, then go to discovertheedge.com. That's my main website for my coaching and training and speaking. And then uh, Leaders of Transformation is the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Uh, I'm certainly all over Facebook, and you can find me there, Nicole Jansen. Um, I also have the, you know, the standard business pages and all that good stuff. So I love to connect. And if anybody has any questions or wants to unpack what we talked about here further, then they're certainly uh, welcome to reach out to me. They can reach out through my website. There's a contact page or through Facebook or whatever. I'm always very accessible and I answer all the messages myself and, and make sure I, I'm very responsive with that to help people to move forward and, and uh, do what they, uh, you know, fill, fulfill their vision. That's some great stuff, and I would definitely recommend to our listeners to not only check out your podcast, but also to check out some of your work and go to your website as well. Thank you. Nicole, I would like to say a very special thank you for being on our show today. You shared some some awesome stuff with us, and I truly appreciate you as well as your time. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate you having me, and, and um, always here to serve. Anything I can do to help, you let me know. To sum up today's episode in our theme of the day, passion, it is easy to see that Nicole Jansen is passionate about her work. She shared some great nuggets with us today, and I know that I personally took a lot from today's episode. Nicole discussed something that Lou Holtz said, WIN, which stands for What's Important Now, a simple yet profound concept if you truly think about it. Nicole also mentioned how on her screensaver it says, you can change the world. Imagine if more people truly felt and thought that way. In her parting words, Nicole shared a few things that are near and dear to the no-quit family. She stressed the importance of truly believing in yourself, even when others don't. She also mentioned it is so important to never give up on yourself and to keep moving forward even if and when others doubt you. So our call to action today is more of a hopeful piece of advice. Keep going. No matter who is or isn't in your corner, don't let them stop you. Sometimes people intentionally don't want others to achieve huge levels of success because they fear it might make them look bad. When others doubt you, don't listen. Don't doubt yourself. Keep your head down, your attitude up, and go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.